Hello my friends, Takuya here, and welcome back to another Hearts of Iron 4 video. My friends, over the last several weeks, I have seen a lot of comments that have been pointing out that I have actually missed a nation in the base game. Something that, with the latest DLC that had come out just about, what, five months ago here, I think at this point? Ah, no, four months ago. Yes, four months ago, Arms Against Tyranny came out, and among the nations, between Sweden, between Finland, between Denmark, I have not yet played Norway. Now, my friends, I'm saying this right now, there's actually a reason why I have not played Norway yet, and I'm going to demonstrate demonstrate that for you here today. Over the last several hours, I have gone through and extensively playtested every single thing that I can possibly do for Norway, and unfortunately, this tree is still very broken. And I don't mean in the usual very fun way where, you know, I really like breaking the game and having just a fun, jolly old time. I mean, actually broken in a way that is incredibly frustrating for certain paths, like the alternate democratic path, which I'm going to be demonstrating for you here today. Norway had a, uh, had a very bad time back during World War II, understandably so. But even prior to World War II, Norway wasn't exactly the most stable state, unlike what you know of Norway here now today. Which, yes, it has its history right here. Since gaining independence from Sweden in 1905, which, yeah, for those who are not aware, Norway and Sweden were actually united under the same monarchy for a period of around 100 years. But since that time period, Norway has struggled to find its political footing, and only now it's starting to show signs of political stability and recovery from the hard 30s, the, the Great Depression. Now, as its neighbors to the south start bickering, war seems closer than ever. Norway must find a path for keeping its fragile independence, and the, um, w w uh, my, my friends... Uh, you, you all, you, you, you all, you all can't really see this here from where I am, but there is a word here, which I'm going to duck, that I, I, I probably should not try to pronounce for fear of saying something else. Yeah, that thing. Essentially, the government cabinet with a very interesting name is betting on neutrality and disarmament to appear as harmless as possible to Europe's great powers, but the merits of this approach remain to be seen. Norway starts out in an absolutely terrible position. Its cabinet is completely incompetent and terrible. It has armed forces that are truly an utterly horrible in the first place. I mean, minus 25 speed, minus 20 organization, and minus 30% attack. Oh my lord, the Vikings have fallen far. The hard 30s, which is gonna be a worse version of the Great Depression, it seems, uh, for us immediately, because we don't actually have an industry like the United States does. Anti-communist sentiment, which is not bad in the first place, but also any forts that we build are gonna be significantly weaker. They are just absolutely terrible. Norway is generally in one of the worst positions I have ever seen of any game, but simultaneously, it has very good broken bonuses it can get, but then other parts of its tree are completely and utterly fried. And so my friends, to that end, we're gonna put on Iron Man mode and let's go ahead and launch this. You can see right now, literally all the play tests that I was trying to do in here today, just doing every single thing I could to try and get this to work. Oh my God, you're gonna see the rage here later. But everyone, before we go ahead and start today's video, I wanted to address something. One of the big criticisms that I have received is that I disproportionately cover certain aspects of media. And I will fully admit, considering everything that I have covered on my varying episodes, yeah, that is probably true. But in order to understand what it is that I'm talking about and make sure that I don't get wrapped up in any kind of media bias, this is why I've been utilizing a service called Ground News. What I am talking about here is an app and a website that will combine all sides of every story in one place so that you can see it along with all the varying biases of that particular source. As an example, for anyone wondering, on that previous video that I did about slavery in Florida and its education, I was specifically pulling from resources like Ground News in order to be able to see the biases of the varying outlets that were reporting things. You can see from the very beginning that the majority of sources that were even reporting on the subject in the first place were left-leaning. And I'll say this right now, but that is not inherently a bad thing. One of the features that Ground News has is something called Blind Spot, which, considering that the amount of sources on this that lean left, it will specifically point out that only 16% of the sources that are talking about this are right-wing leaning, which means that a lot of people who only follow right-wing sources are not going to hear about this at all. Whether it's organizing the bias of the coverage, analyzing the ownership of where your news is actually coming from, or rating the factuality level of the sources that you were pulling from the first place, Ground News has all of this. I can only say that I'm incredibly grateful for Ground News sponsoring me because their service is incredibly valuable to what it is that I do. Go check out my link down in the description and you're going to be able to get 30% off subscription. If all of us took the time to understand the biases of the things that we are reading, then perhaps we wouldn't be as angry with one another all the time. Thank you, Ground News, for sponsoring this episode. Here we are, the world of 1936, and Norway is very, very broken. We actually have a fairly decent-sized army from the beginning, even though we don't really have much manpower, because we actually do start on limited 
conscription. That being said, we don't actually want any of these forces that we're going to be using here, so that's not really going to matter. Research-wise, there's a couple things that we're going to need to get off the get-go. We're going to need better production. We are going to need construction, of course, and naturally, we're going to need research. The basic three to start with every game. Civilian factory-wise, there are a series of things that we need to do. Now, the way that Norway works in the beginning here is that your country is very backwards, and you can't actually build up and develop your country until you do certain things in the focus tree that is going to cost two types of resources. One, political power, and then the second, interestingly enough, off, especially when you go down here for the path of rearmament, is that once we get to restore the public trust in the storting, what we're going to be able to do is spend our convoys as well to build civilian factories, but also at the cost of stability. The Norwegian focus tree is actually a really extensive one. I just wish that the whole thing was not as broken as it actually is. It's just, it is a cool one. It really is. Don't get me wrong, but it's simultaneously exceptionally frustrating. Over here, you can see the path that would actually take you into the monarchist, uh, the fascist path. You have the historic path, which continues the disarmed re... not rearmed, uh, di the disarmed government. The alternate democratic path, so the altist path that is the vote of no confidence that allows you to take a more aggressive democratic stance. This is pretty much what happens if Norway acts like the alternate democratic Britain, where you uh, get to go and crush the Germans down here. And then, of course, the communist path, which is something that I'll probably explore here, as I'm sure that that will probably work out better than what we currently are trying to do. But no, for today's focus, what we're going to be doing is the vote of no confidence. Can we trust the thing that I'm not exactly going to try to pronounce and his labor party to keep the Bolsheviks and the Nazis a bay. This disbarment of his feels more like a Greek opening the doors of Troy than a prime minister ready to defend his land from communism. We cannot let them cede our fledgling nation to the Soviet Union. Yes, the vote of no confidence is what we are going to start with. We don't really have much of an industry from the get-go, so we are going to go ahead and build up a couple of things here for infrastructure, and then we're actually going to want naval dockyards in the beginning in order to be able to use those to build convoys to sell, and I'm going to show you that here in a bit. Simultaneously, our two dockyards we are going to want to go ahead and set to produce as many convoys as we can from the get-go. It's, it's it's really important. We we need it. Also, I'm going to need a lot of infantry equipment from the beginning, so let's go ahead and get that here too. Slap all these into one army. It's not really going to matter, and put it on the border with Sweden. Literally, do not care. You're going to see what's going to happen here soon. No confidence vote against Johan individual. Despite its early promise, it seems that the government of Johan formed last year was not only failing to deliver, but also hell-bent on disarming. Many members of parliament believe that Norway should develop its industry in a way that allows for investing in the fledging Norwegian armed forces with the intent of deterring a foreign power from invading. And so, a vote of no confidence was triggered by members of the Conservative Party, the Hore... 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 Though its chairman, the industrialist Johan Andersen, was already thinking about retiring, he seized the opportunity to lead Norway in a new direction, presenting himself as pragmatic and efficient alternative to that guy's social progress dreams. Yes, it's going to really hurt our stability, uh, but hey, you know what? We're, we're, we're going to do our best with this. Anderson is in. Nice. Next up on this is that we are going to need to continue down the path of weathering the storm to come. This is going to allow us to begin to be able to develop our nation, build up some military support, build up everything it is that we need, and hopefully, hopefully actually be able to do things. Also, since I'm doing this on Iron Man, feel free to watch. I'm going to say step by step what it is that I'm going to be doing, which is also then going to in turn show you just how broken this entire thing is and not in a good way, of course. Our next step that we're going to be doing on here is that after that previous focus gave us some army experience is that we need to go ahead and design just a basic division. See, it's going to be something simple, cavalry. You know how this kind of strategy works that you're probably guessing what it is I'm going to be doing with Sweden here. But what we really need is just a spam division, which I'm going to slap unicorns onto. And that seems very, very reasonable. Okay. Convert every single unit that we have to spam, and that's going to give us back 47,000 manpower, as well as some decent equipment. We won't actually need to worry about any of that. And in addition to that, we should start training up 14 divisions here just so that we're going to have a full stack of 24. Also, start training these guys. We want them to be as prepared as possible considering how weak they are. All right, with weathering the storm done, that means we can do our final focus on the side that we need, restore the public trust in the storting. After decades of instability and inaction, it is understandable that the general population has no trust in our parliament. The storting, which, yes, I mean, who really would trust the government in any circumstance? Without public trust, we will not be able to push through the measures needed to bring about our country to stability. This is going to unlock the decision to get economic relief measures, and when we do that, that's going to gradually be able to break us out of the depression that we're, well, currently suffering through. 
It's Norway's high school era, so to speak. Oh, actually, I realized it's the previous focus that goes and unlocks this thing that I'm trying to do. If you go to decisions now, after doing the uh, weathering the storm to come, this is going to allow you to start to develop the nation of Norway. Essentially, every 50 convoys and 70 political power, you can utilize this to develop your provinces gradually, which is going to build them up into pretty nice and powerful things here. I mean, each one of these, every time I click, is going to give me a civilian factory. That's awesome. You can also spend preparedness on utilizing bonuses when you're actually at war, which again, really nice. The problem is that every single one of these that we select is going to reduce our stability by 1% per week for 50 days. Meaning every single time we click one of these, we will lose six or seven stability. And that is not something that happens just once. That is every single time. To balance that, once this goes and completes, restore the public trust, we will actually be able to spend one preparedness to boost our stability by one per week. So no matter what, we're basically going to be losing stability. Yeah, yeah, you can kind of see where there's a bit of a problem here from the get-go, that it doesn't it doesn't really counterbalance. Anyway, to that end, we're going to go ahead and start preparing the capital here for war. And already, you can see my stability is ticking downwards. How fun. With restore the public trust, that means as soon as I have one over here, which actually, because I clicked the button, it's going to give me one preparedness anyway, I can now click economic relief measures. This is going to increase my consumer goods by 20% and increase my weekly stability by 1% which means it basically balances out what I already have, but then also it is at least going to give me one political power per day extra, which is actually pretty nice. You know, that is actually pretty decent. And once I do this three times, that will end up removing the hard 30s from me. It's, you have to do it. It just kind of sucks overall that this is what you have to do. So we're going to do economic measures, and then at the same time, we're still going to lose stability because we're going to prepare another province. The next step that I'm going to launch on here is Liberal Conservative Alliance because we need to boost our stability as much as we can because we're going to be sacrificing all of that and also our democracy and political power. Because again, the lower that your stability drops, the less that you're actually going to produce. Meaning that even if we get all these extra factories from doing all these other different focuses, the more that we lower our stability, the less that we're actually going to end up producing so it does nothing. So you have to play the game to actually balance your freaking stability. Despite the Hoya and the Venstra meaning right and left respectively, our two parties have enough common interest that we can form a government coalition and deflect any attacks that the Romp Labor Party, or no, from that Romp Labor Party. Together, we will shape Norway into a nation that is friendly to capital and ready to fight wars here and abroad. Also, dispersed industry, because we're going to have to deal with the Germans, and it's a good idea to not get bombed. See, because I have two active here at the same time, both of those stack, which means I still end up losing one stability a week, even despite the fact that I'm doing economic relief measures. Really, at the end of this, I'm trading away convoys in the long term to get a single stability factory, which still really hurts. And now we're going to sabotage the unions because, you know, Norway and strong workers' rights, that's not really a thing. No, no, who, who would ever think of that? Also, once we have 150 political power, it's probably a good idea to go down here to partial mobilization just so that we can start producing things at least a little bit faster to be able to do that. At least one of the bonuses with Norway, and you need to watch this around July 1936, is that you do at least start with a military staff member, even if he's horrible and incompetent here. It does allow you to generate some army experience, which means from the beginning, you can actually get relief of command, so it's going to reduce the cost of everything else and increase how much army experience you gain. So, okay, pretty decent, actually. Fascist harass Liv Trotsky. While the contentious revolutionary was out on a fishing trip with his host, fascists connected to the National Samling party broke into Conrad Knudsen's home where Trotsky was staying. The burglars were looking for any incriminating evidence that would justify getting rid of the exiled communist, but they were fortunately scared off the property by Knudsen's daughter, Hjordis, before they could grab anything of significance. Yeah, we get the option here of, uh, of like cracking down on him. Now we're, we're gonna we're gonna send him to house arrest. Send him to a farm. Let's see. All of my spam cavalry are done, so we're just gonna go ahead and set you out here. Get rid of this, and once that is done, slap you on here. Beautiful. Trotsky is now under house arrest at a farm, and we are going to uh, figure out what to do with him afterwards. Now, this is something that I should have actually been monitoring, but as time goes on, I need to keep on remembering to hit economic relief measures because we will need to try and get rid of that construction issue that we are facing as soon as possible. It's the most that I can do. And on top of that, it increases my political power so I can monitor this. And even as my stability goes up slightly, I can then just wait to click this again. Which actually, I should show that now. The thing about Norway is that you can increase local population through a second level preparedness and also add in aluminum, which is 
really interesting that you can actually do that in here. It's still from the second level causes a weekly loss of stability by one, which sucks. I, it's, it's really bad. But hey, now at least we can prepare Trumps for war. And as soon as we've sabotaged all of the unions, we can then contain the labor movement. And once we have contained the labor movement, which is going to increase democracy and give us more political power and more support, we can then start going down the path of consolidating our power. Oh, Carl Gustav Fischer, you have such a good portrait, man. Make sure that we get a field marshal here, give him the offensive doctrine so that we're able to move more without losing some of our organization, because that is actually going to be crucial for these guys here. Also, once we do end up going to war, it's a good idea to just preemptively make sure that you do this, switch over to the spam regiment and have that go to local police force so it uses the least amount of forces. All right, once we've contained the labor movement, that means the next step after this is not going to be rearmament. We're not going to be preparing our military. We're not preparing an independent Norway. We're not doing any of this. Nope, we are now going to beeline down the political path here, and Norway is going to change from just being Norway to the Norwegian War Cabinet. Now that we have the power to secure the future we seek, it is time to make sure that we can keep it. Through purges and new assignments, we will prune the state in shape that will allow us to succeed and prosper. Election public opposes rearmament. Oh, damn it. Not really? I didn't get this event the last time that I did it, and that sucks that this happened because it is actually going to hurt me. We are we have to protect our sovereignty, so we're going to stop that. Damn. Final step on here, one more economic relief measures, and that is actually, once that's complete, that should get rid of, where is it, the hard 30s. Yeah, that's going to eliminate that, so I actually have some construction and goods I can use. At the same time, we still need to prepare other places around us, which, goddamn, that's, that's minus three stability a week having all of that set. <laughs> Oh, I hate this. I hate this system. League of Nations embargo resolution. Yeah, naturally, embargo Italy. It's it's the natural step of what needs to be done. Uh, political advisor, we can go ahead and probably a great idea once you have a decent amount of political power at this point is the Triv Halden Lie because it increases your stat by 10 and it increases your political power, which you're actually going to need a decent amount of that in the beginning when using this. But you think that because you think you're going to have to spend 70 political power every single time in order to fix your nation. You'll see why I thought this too and then it backfires on you. But for the sake of showing it, I still have to click it. Next up on here, we're going to denounce the German Reich, which is going to increase our war support and give us more political power. Awesome for us. The fate of Trotsky. See, this is where we get the option where we can either send him to the Soviet Union or send him to Mexico. We're going to send him to Mexico, where he is then going to get ice pick lobotomied. You know, fun times in history. Now, we only have 73 convoys left, which means, sadly, we can only do one more preparation right now. That is all that we could do. Technically speaking, with the system that came out in Arms Against Tyranny, I could go to the market if I wanted to right now, and I could actually buy a ton of convoys. That is something that I could do. Like, I could buy them off the British here and actually use them. The problem is, is that if I wanted to do this, per se, because, let's see, I'm constructing a decent amount of things and try to build. Let's say I used all 12 of my factories here to do this, right? If I went and bought all of these convoys and I used 12... And I wanted to buy, let's say, you know, 50 convoys, just enough that I would be able to go ahead and click the button one more time. That's going to cost me a grand total of 7,000 IC, which I would finish by the 28th of April, 1937. Wait a minute. So that would take me four months to actually pay for 50 convoys. And in that time, I'm building literally nothing. That's not worth it. I don't have the economy to actually do that. It's too high of a cost. No, instead, we just have to build our own. And by this point in 1937, it is a very good idea to do one thing. In fact, I probably should have done this on one of my previous researches. You need to make sure at this point that you get the transport ships. We will need to be able to utilize these for future actions. So we have to get them right now. There's denounced the German Reich. We are preparing our Navy. And let us see here. Next step is to squash dissent. We cannot let the fruits of our effort to be stolen by vermin. It is imperative that we fight and erase dissent once and for all. After all, anyone who doubts our government is an enemy, of course. This is actually an exceptionally powerful thing because even though it's not really going to do anything for us except hurt democracy, it will give us access to a political advisor that is crucial to being able to rush down the expansion path as fast as possible. You see, as soon as this completes, then that means I'm going to get access to the political advisor of Jonas Lie, or Lie. I'm actually not sure how I would say that with the 
Norwegian accent or like for anything. Either way, this is not only going to give me bo more bonuses to my manpower for anything that I take over, but simultaneously, it's going to really help me with stability, really help me with war support to give me a whopping 20%, and it's going to reduce the damage that I would take to any kind of garrisons, which is awesome for any occupation. Of course, it is going to increase fascism, but that is a very, very minimal amount. You need to get this guy immediately because the next focus after that, prepare for war, that is something that is going to give me three mills and three dockyards and also 10,000 manpower. And simultaneously, it will give me options to do more stuff. The thing is, you can't actually do the focus after this, proactive defense, until you have above 75 war support, which that previous guy from Squash Descent, Jonas Lee, that allowed us to actually reach this. So, next step, prepare for war. See, I have under political power at this point. It probably would be a prudent idea for me to just go ahead and improve worker conditions. I'm going to need as much stability as I can possibly get, so we're going to go ahead and go for that. But with prepare for war done, that means I'm actually going to have a little bit of a military industry here to utilize, which is going to be nice. And, well, I am actually going to hurt decently on steel, so we are going to need to at least buy a little bit of that now. But it will allow us to do proactive defense, a thing that Norway absolutely could do in order to reverse the tides on Sweden. Our enemies, after all, cannot attack us if we've destroyed them already. Let us bring the war to their lands before it ever touches ours. Show them what the people of the Norwegian war cabinet can do when they're threatened. Thus, it allows us to create a faction, the Nordic Council, and gives us even more war support as well as the next abilities to attack Denmark and Sweden. All right, there is transport ship. I absolutely did need that. And the next step after that, we are probably going to want to go ahead and get trucks. Yeah, we are going to need trucks. With our industry somewhat underway, we will need more access to resources and also machine tools. Very good stuff. There is proactive defense. And now the next step after this is that we are going to get to choose to attack Sweden or Denmark. Well, we're going to be able to do both. But in this case, the only one that we can immediately validly reach is Sweden. Sweden has an enormous amount of high quality iron ore beneath their land, which has flowed through Narvik through winter when their northern ports are frozen. Leaving the source of ore so exposed and readily available to any foreign tyrant is unacceptable. We must seize it before our enemies think of doing the same. This is going to give us the annex war goal against Sweden that is actually going to balance things out because notice, remember, our military is still having horrible effects. Like we still have minus 25% to speed and minus 30% to attack. At least doing this is going to give us a plus 25% bonus to attack and break through against Sweden. So we're only going to moderately suck. Still, time to go ahead and stop preparing our exercises and you all know exactly what it is that we're doing we're going to spam our cavalry through sweden in order to be able to take their territory out without hopefully fighting all too much with secure Swedish iron ore, that means we can immediately go over here and declare war, and we're going to need to attack Sweden as soon as possible. You all know exactly how it is that this ends up going. And then immediately before we have time to do anything else, it's time to try and secure Denmark as well. The great powers that lay south of the Norwegian war cabinet have long been kept at bay by our former master, Denmark. If their weak army were to capitulate, the gate to the Norwegian war cabinet would be wide open. We must prevent this by manning this gate ourselves. Yes, it's going to take 70 days for that to unlock, and we are at war with Sweden, something which currently has about 20 odd divisions, maybe around, you know, 15, maybe 12, 14, etc. The big thing is that they have a decent number of divisions. I outnumber them in divisions, but their divisions are always stronger than mine. In the multiple tests that I have run, I had found that the ideal number to do for this is 24, and I realized I should not have spent the political power that I did. Oh my god, I'm an idiot. Okay, I'm not going to restart. I'm not going to do that, but you all can see from the beginning here is that the war prepared thing has gone away and on top of that i i forgot that when i go to war i get this advisor that increases my conscription law cost by 75 whereas before i actually would have been able to go to extensive conscription but i can't do that yeah that's fun okay i'm gonna go ahead and do economic relief measures right now and spend some of my preparedness because oh lord i need some political power Hopefully we can actually do it in time here because I, I, I really want those divisions to actually be able to do anything. And we're just going to snake our way over here through Sweden as much as possible. All right, we're going to go after all the individual points in here, trying to do as much damage as we can. We know that we're going to lose large swaths of the country. That actually does not matter. We are just trying to break through as much as possible, create as much confusion for the AI, because then they won't actually 
actually be able to react. Am I gonna lose some divisions? Maybe. In fact, I, I was hoping to actually be able to go up to that conscription because I wanted that manpower as fast as I could. So we're gonna try and monitor this and make sure that our troops don't get into any fights here whatsoever because that could be bad. In fact, I'm gonna go down here to three speed so I can micro it way better. All right, decent so far, decent so far. Oh, well, oh, see, see, some of these got stuck. I do not want them to attack up here. We want those guys to hold out. Nope, don't attack, don't attack, don't attack. Just keep on going. Let them keep moving. It's fine. It's fine. Just, 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 just chill. Just chill. It's okay. It is okay. Just don't attack. Let their tanks do some decent work. It's all right. Let's see. What do we have down here? All right. All right. See, these are broken through. This is a reason why we are trying to attack Stockholm on multiple fronts. Some of these troops will be stopped. Others will not be. The thing that I really hope is that my units don't get destroyed because that very well could happen if the HP drops down low enough, which is not, that's not good for me, actually. Come on, just keep going. Keep going. Keep going. How close are we? They are about halfway. Okay, okay, okay. We're almost there. As soon as we take Stockholm as well as a couple key locations here, we should be able to do this. Oh, nope, 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 nope. Don't go in there. Don't go in there. Don't go in there. In fact, please, I know I might be sacrificing this division in here, but I need you to rush in there and take their capital as soon as possible. There we are. Oh, okay. <laughs> See, it's a little bit of a risky thing, but you actually can take out Sweden with way smaller forces by doing this. It just sucks that I, I couldn't actually go up to the higher conscription tier like I actually needed to. That's... That is actually going to be a major problem for me, but it's fine. It's all right. It's all right. We didn't do everything exactly as I kind of wanted to, but we can still seize their entire Navy here, which is going to be great for us. And we occupy the rest of it, which is going to cause our, our garrison to go up drastically. And I really don't want that here. That's going to be a major problem for me because now I can't actually go up in conscription tier, which is, that's actually pretty frustrating, but you know what? We'll, we'll deal with it. We will deal with it. The way that we're going to do that is we are going to go and create a fallback line. The initial strategy strategy that I wanted to use is that I wanted to overwhelm the uh, the the, uh, the Danish line here by utilizing just a whole bunch of crap units along with a couple key good ones, but I won't be able to do that as effectively as what I wanted. So now I'm going to have to create just a few key pushing divisions, and that's all that I'm actually going to be able to utilize. So yes, our infantry is going to be modified slightly, and what we are going to do is probably convert one of these maybe over to it. I mean, it uses a big chunk of manpower, but we do actually kind of need that. Also, I like the Norwegian things that you can get bonuses on for the metals, like equipment capture ratio modifier plus 10%. That is pretty awesome here, actually. It gives that and 5% breakthrough. That is really good if you don't have much of a powerful industry. Still, we have time to prepare to secure Denmark because Sweden is going to resist us a lot, which is, is not going to be good. We will need to attack them as soon as possible. We don't want to be able to hold on to them for very long because it it, it will be a major issue. And at some point, I may even have to switch to no garrison. And I don't want to do that. In fact, actually, there is an advisor that if I want manpower, I can get him. Where is he? Minister of Agriculture. I lose 5% war support, but I gain 300 weekly manpower, which isn't a lot, but that actually is something. So I will take that. That will actually help me. So I'll take that and maybe a second division in here, something that needs a little bit of training. We'll go ahead and prepare you as well, just so that we'll be able to do some decent pushes here. And I know that I've selected superior firepower when I could go down mass assault and actually increase my ability to get uh how many was it yeah an additional five percent recruitable population i could go down that path but then the issue becomes that i i don't have much of a population in norway in the first place that that will really help me it's not like china you know where it can actually be utilized i will go ahead and create at least a little bit of a uh of a diversion on this side here by taking four of my cavalry and i will throw them into the ability to create some kind of naval invasion over on a uh, jutland over here i don't want to but more than likely, I'm going to have to do it, considering my population is fall. Oh my god, it's falling even lower. Oh, that's not good. That's not good at all. That's not good at all. We have secured Denmark, and here is the thing. The big problem one can face here is right as you manage to secure Denmark. We just need to go ahead and finish this off. And then as soon as that finishes, as soon as you have secured Denmark, you need to pause the game immediately, because if you don't, then France is going to actually guarantee Denmark, and no one really wants that. So immediately, that means we're going to have to go over here to Denmark and we're just going to have to go and attack you. There's not really much else we can do. Our army is still really weak, but you know, we're kind of limited what it is that we can do. Once that is all done, uh, we can't 
exactly crush Hitler with the forces that we have here currently. So what we're going to next try to do is maybe go down here and actually try to reform our army. Yes, and this will unlock the decision to modernize armed forces. I'm sure that that's going to work out great for us. That's what we're going to do. Yeah, let's go down here and uproot the secret army and start removing all the varying different fascist powers within our entity. Or, or no, fascist, fa wait, fascist entities within our power. God, I can't speak anymore. We're going to wait for Denmark to come to us. We are not going to allow them to surrender. We're going to say that it's barely more than a speed bump because I want that manpower. Yes, you can see that they are starting to invade us. That is perfectly fine. We're going to let them do that because we want to weaken them as much as humanly possible. All right, are you, are you not going to move in more? Should I, should I actually take my divisions and try and see about cutting you off? I mean, I can do that if you want. Oh, what's this? You're going and spamming some divisions on here for me to be able to attack? Thanks. I appreciate that. I love when you do things like that for me to help me out here, bunny. That is really appreciated. Thank you. You know, we're just, we're just gonna do this as much as we possibly can. Yep, our attacks are going to take quite literally forever because our country bonuses are so bad. Thanks, game. I really appreciate your help for this. Thank you so much. That's at least one division that is wiped out. Thank you. No, 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 no. Come on, come on, come on. Let them in, let them in, let them in. Let, if they want to attack us into our country, then so be it. Don't mind me, just trying to attack as much as I can. And also from this, I'm simultaneously realizing like, yeah, no, I'm not gonna be able to hold Sweden as it is. We're gonna have to go down to probably no garrison. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm gonna need that manpower in my army to actually fight. Go figure. Oh, uh, come on, come on. Let me, let me do things. Let me freaking do things already. All right, there we go. There's another division wiped. Thank you. Thank you for that. And uh, yeah, we've we've now wiped out the majority of the Danish army. They shouldn't actually be able to resist us. So the moment that they now send their troops over to the side to launch an attack, we can actually just withdraw and let them come to us. There we go. That launches their strike there, which means for our case, it's... Oh, wait, no. I don't have my navy out. Okay, that's a, that's a little bit of a problem. There we go. You launch a strike over on this side, and you all try to rush this as soon as you can. There you go. Take the capital. We'll go ahead and rush in here. Thank you for abandoning your front line. We're just going to go over down here and seize Malmo. Oh, wait, nope. They just... Okay, never mind. They're not they're not going to fully abandon it. That's that's okay. Thank you for kind of abandoning this sort of. Locke's replacement. Christian Locke has served in the Norwegian army for a long time. He was appointed as commanding general almost a decade ago during peacetime and years before the risk to our country actually became obvious. As we've lost any confidence in his ability, if he had to lead a wartime effort, he will be replaced. The question is, who will actually lead him? Well, we're going to get the genius who's a great attacker, of course, and arrest Quistling, the guy who is the, uh, the, the, the fascist agitator here. There we go. Come on, push through. If you can just counter push, counter push. Keep on going. We can hold out here for as long as possible. We have now surrounded them from this side. We can break through over here. You just need to be able to take the capital. We can take the capital. We have it. Come on. Don't let them fall. Don't let them fall. Yes, there we go. Denmark falls. Excellent. It takes a little bit longer to do it like that. I, I sacrificed way more manpower than I actually wanted to, unfortunately. But that's kind of what ends up happening with this when you forget to not conserve your political power and end up not being able to get yourself on extensive conscription, which is not fun. But the Norwegian War Cabinet now controls the entirety of Scandinavia, which means that we can immediately go down here and restore the Kalmar Union. That's right. Scandinavia is reborn. Of course, I've done this multiple times with other nations, showing this from Finland and Sweden, etc. You know, so I mean, it's not, it's like a same basic strategy that works with all of it. But here's the thing. The reason, my friends, that I'm showing you all this today, the reason why this show is so incredibly frustrating for me and why I spent so many hours trying to get this to work is do you remember that feature that we talked about here at the beginning of the game? Do you remember how we could go in here and actually fix our nation? How we were able to do all these things for readiness? Well, we're almost at this level. Just watch this. Quistling is is arrested and that means that finally finally my friends we should be able to reform the army by only spending a hundred convoys doesn't that sound nice doesn't that sound so nice years of neglect of the hand of christian Locke and the liberal party had left the army in what can only be called shambles we must rebuild our military hierarchy logistics strategies and protocols so they're up to par with the modern armies that we are likely to face awesome. And now that we've united Scandinavia, look at our nation. Look at how glory this is. Look at how many civilian factories we have. We can utilize that to probably build up a whole bunch of dockyards, right? Because we need dockyards in order to be able to spend that in order to, you know, fix our country. That seems like a reasonable thing to do. Yeah, let's let's just build a ton of dockyards. Totally. Love that idea. And on top of all that, we now have a viable 
military industry. I mean, 16 mils is not anything large, of course, but it is at least something that we can actually work with, you know? That's pretty good. And all of these dockyards. Oh, I'm going to produce so many convoys. I'm going to fix my nation so well. Obsolete armed forces. <laughs> no, we're going to fix that. The Viking lords are coming back, my friends. That's right. They are. And nothing is going to stop them, especially not some potentially stupid game mechanic that for whatever reason would completely break a nation and remove its ability to actually do anything whatsoever. Oh, wait a minute. What is this? Modernize armed forces. The Norwegian military has been neglected for so long, our armed forces look more fit for a museum than a battlefield. In order to fix this, Norway's total development has to be more than 15. Well, haven't I developed a nation? Can I not develop it anymore? No, no. W w what is this? I have to spend 100 convoys, but this is locked. This is locked behind development that I now no longer have access to that system to work on. What the hell? What the absolute hell? My friends, at this point, I've gone in and I've checked this, right? I spent the past several hours hours trying to play through this. I spent all this time trying to find any kind of focus from just going through. Maybe, maybe, maybe I can go in here and unlock it in some other means because maybe there's something that will actually bring back the system. No, 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 there's not. No, there's not. That doesn't work no matter what other focus you do in here because we have gone to war. Preparedness is done. It's gone. So if you don't actually prepare and fix your nation beforehand, you will quite literally not be able to do anything. In fact, because you unite Scandinavia this means that even with you getting the focus of form Nordic Council, you don't actually get the option here unless I go in like Puppet Finland or something and make them part of my empire. So this whole thing is kaput. Uh, I, I can't do anything to actually build and sustain myself. So now for the rest of the game, no matter what it is that I do, I will eternally be stuck with minus 25% speed, minus 20 org, and minus 30% attack. Now, here's the thing. You can probably deal with orc, right? You could make some divisions that are glass cannons where they have low orc but really high attack, maybe speed and other stuff. The fact that you now have a combination between speed, orc, and attack all reduced, not by like 5 or 10%, but a whopping 30% to attack, meaning that your divisions will basically do nothing. And so even, I even tested this. I played through this right here. We're on Iron Man. You've seen I've done everything. If I go down the path of Crush Hitler, I will get a temporary plus 40% percent bonus against Germany. That is awesome, right? That is great. It will last me for two years. So I will get plus 40% attack. That still means that at the end of the day, I would only have plus 10% attack. With the other bonuses that I already get hurting me, I won't actually be able to utilize that to do anything. We would, at this point, effectively be stuck. You literally cannot do anything else. Like the, the preparedness stage for Norway is broken. And as much as I would want to continue with this down this path, it's something that is so incredibly frustrating that I, I literally don't want to because it's it's that bad. It actually upsets me. So my friends, even though I talked about this, this I even mentioned this back when the DLC first came out, that this was a thing in here that was broken. It is still broken. There is still nothing that you can actually do as Norway with the alternate democratic path, unless you spent the entire time as the nation, as independent Norway, building yourself up first, waiting until maybe 1940, perhaps, maybe, for you to get your military preparedness completely fixed, and then actually go on the expansion. But by then, Germany has already taken out Denmark, okay? Um, if you go and attack Scandinavia, this just means that Germany is going to get into the country. Like, they will, they, they will have military access through Scandinavia. So they'll just attack you there. And Scandinavia, not Scandinavia, Sweden. Sweden will just end up joining the Axis. Like, what, what, what is the point? There is actually no way. So Paradox, please, if you are watching this, if you see this, please fix this. Because there is no reason that you should limit Norway this hard. Unless, you know, that's just a little bit of Swedish pride that you have there. That you had to really screw over the Norwegians. Which I don't blame you. I don't blame you. But still, that is frustrating. My friends, I am going to end the video here today. This is not a full playthrough. I know it's a little bit weird with the way that I'm structuring this. But you can see how immensely frustrating that this would be. And why it is that I have not played Norway the the entire time that the DLC has been out. A lot of people have questioned as to why this is it. I'm sure that the other focuses, if I go down the path of like things for, you know, monarchy or other things, it'll it'll fix. I'm pretty sure there was a whole thing of going down the communist side and it just outright removes obsolete forces altogether. So we can try other things. If you all want to see me go down a proper path with Norway, then make sure to go ahead and like this video. Comment, subscribe, do what you can. And if this video gets 5,000 likes, I will do an actual thing for Norway and we will bring back some Norwegian pride. In other words, I'm asking for the entire population of Norway to like this video. Thank you, my friends, and goodbye.